On the show tonight, we've got some real characters. The Greatest Showman, Adonis Creed, Jim's dad from American Pie, Gordon Gecko, and Ant-Man. All this in your actual Dame Judy Dench. Say the words, Judy. Let's start the show. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Oh, we've got a great show for you tonight. I tell you, I couldn't be more excited if I was Rishi Sunak watching the lunchtime news about Nicola Sturgeon. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, I must ask you, did you all have a lovely Valentine's Day? Yeah. Oh, I hope we have some nice Valentine's food. You know, perhaps oysters. Oh, feed your partner half a dozen of those, and they'll soon be desperate to go upstairs. <laughs> Did you see this Valentine's story? A shop in London was selling a bunch of roses for 200 pounds. 200 pounds! You think, who wants sex so badly they're going to pay that much for some flowers? <laughs> Let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, the stars of the new Ant-Man film we're dropping by, that's Paul Rudd and the legendary Michael Douglas. Music from pop superstar Pink, everybody. Yes. But first, this comedy great has starred in American Pie, Splash, Best in Show, and the global television hit Shit's Creek. Welcome for the very first time, Eugene Levy. Now back in the ring for Creed 3. Please welcome Mr. Michael B. Jordan! The Greatest Showman, Les Miserables, and X-Men. It's the one and only Hugh Jackman! <laughs> Stage and screen is a BAFTA, Golden Globe, and Oscar winner, and we couldn't love her any more than we do. Please welcome Dame Judy Dench. Hello, this is Judy Dench. It's a step, and a step, and a step. There we go. Oh, yeah. Have a seat, dude. Oh, oh. <laughs> Have a seat. Have a seat. Oh. There's your cushion there. You're all oh. good. Ah. Oh, uh, uh, quite a couch. I think you'll agree. That's not bad. Oh. <laughs> not, oh. So no, shove up, Eugene. <laughs> shove up. Shove up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Sit, sit close. Sit ah, close. I see. You're good. You're good. 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 You're good. Uh, uh, Dame uh, Judy Dench, do you know everyone yeah. on the couch? Well, I do now. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a, a bit of a hug back here. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. Nice. It was a warm hug. It's worth knowing. But you've you've met. You Jackman before, I think. We did. Oh, we, we met. met. Oh, we did. Oh, we met. <laughs> we did once. <laughs> once. <laughs> you only it remember once. A, oh, is that all I remember? Yeah, there's oh, many yeah. more times. Was it a Judy? fortnight? <laughs> <I think>. <laughs> 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 it was at least a fortnight. No, no, didn't we you, meet a... you met in a corridor, didn't we? We did meet in a corridor. Mm -hmm. Total strangers, and he, we had a great kiss. Ooh. Yeah. My people are very, very envious. <laughs> We've had another one just now, so I've no. had two kisses. Wow, and the, the night is young. Yes, Judy. and the night, the night is young. young. Keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. See you guys. <laughs> uh, and actually, but uh, you, Jackman, you, you nearly worked with Dame Judy. Did oh, you? yes. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had worked with Dame Judy on in anything and everything, but there was a point where my agent rang me and said, are you interested in playing Bond? Not that it was an offer for Bond. Uh, of course, I didn't know that you were playing M at the time, <laughs> um, but it was one of those things where I have since found out when I was being asked if I was interested, about eight other actors were being asked at the same time. Okay. 
including Daniel Craig. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he killed it. And I, uh, I was approached to play Bond. <laughs> Where are you? He was in that one. Not, not James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny being on, I gotta say, being on the show with Hugh, because I've been compared to Hugh Jackman so many times. <laughs> You know, the difference between us really is professionalism. <laughs> I, love I have very little. <laughs> uh, Michael B. Jordan, What's up? I didn't realize, so your name is a kind of directly connected to your dad. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a junior, because our middle names are different. different. My, my dad is Michael A. Jordan, I'm Michael B. So, oh, that's that's, cool. isn't that cute? <laughs> that's so yeah. cool. By chance, I think. I don't know if that was intentional. Oh, it must have been. I'll call him and, and ask after the show. <laughs> I've never really thought about it like that until just now. It's actually well. a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just assumed if you had a son, he'd be Michael C. I can't and do on that down the much. line. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm breaking the cycle now. I gotta, name, I gotta give him something else. I'm not gonna name him Michael. I, I can't do it. <laughs> and Eugene Levy, I think a lot of people uh, know you and love you from Schitt's Creek. Uh, <laughs> Uh, is it is it true? Because now you know it's a success, so everybody knows that it's Shit's Creek. But when it started, there was yeah. some resistance to that name. <laughs> a little. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, they uh, the uh, broadcaster, uh, you know, uh, loved the idea of the show and loved the show, and then they finally got to. Uh... Now let's talk about the title. <laughs> And we had to tell them, uh, quite honestly, there are shits all over the world. Uh, you know, uh, we had to tell them, look in a phone book, and you're going to find shit as a name. It, it's S-D-H-I-T-T. -T. It's a legitimate name, I believe, Irish derivation. Don't, don't know. Uh, don't blame us. Uh, uh, and uh, they tried to change it. They tried to say, what about, uh, you know, uh, without a paddle? Same ring to it. Does, it does no. not have the same ring. So that's what happened. And, and that, the, per that was the perfect good. name of the rest is history, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, we've got such a busy show tonight, so let's get going. Uh, we're going to start with Dame Judy's new film, Alleluia. It's in cinemas from the 17th of March. Uh, so this is a lovely play. It's based on an Alan Bennett play. It is. Uh, who do you play? What can you tell us about the story? I play somebody called Mary Moss who's a kind of, uh, she's, I think she was a librarian. She sits on her bed all day, does the Times crossword, and fancies her doctor, played by <laughs> Barry Gill. Not a difficult thing to act. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so that's really all I do. And, uh, and Jennifer Saunders, we saw there, is... And Jennifer Saunders... But it's a very different role for her. It's not a... I mean, there are laughs, but it's not a full-out comedy. It isn't. It's got quite... It's got a surprise or two in it. Yes. Which I'm not going to tell you about. No, please don't. Yeah, but it, no, but um, wonderful it was. And Julia McKenzie and, oh, a whole crowd of people. It was heaven to do. And, and on one level, it's, it's a story, but on another level, it's also a big cheer for the NHS. It certainly is. And we need to be reminded, I think, don't we? Now? Yeah. I think it comes out at a very good time. Uh, we'll tell you what, we've got a clip. Uh, this as you, as Mary, uh, getting to grips with technology. Has it got a mouse? You don't need a mouse, Mary. Everything is operated via the touch screen. No. Swipe on the icon like we did before. With greater gentleness, as though you've seen a speck of dust and wish to brush it away. <gasps> ah. <laughs> you put us all out of a job. <laughs> I said that to my computer the day they digitalised the library. I was at the forefront of modernisation. Well, what do you wish me to record? Well, the filmmakers say they simply want your point of view. For you to record what you see, to tell them what your life is like. I could tell you something about that chair, only I won't. Alan Bennett laugh. <laughs> uh, that's Sally <laughs> Gill there. And that iPad becomes sort of uh, crucial to the, to the plot. It does. It mm. does. She, um, she gets up... Well, she doesn't get up to no good. She gets up to quite a lot of good. But she... Yes, it's very much to do with the plot and what it unfolds. Yeah. 
And mm. because it's an Alan Bennett, it's his, it's his words, presumably they are quite precious. And I, I heard you in an interview talking about how learning lines has become harder for you now. It's become impossible. <laughs> it's become absolutely impossible, Graham, because I now because I can't see now, uh, I can't I can't read or anything. Uh, now normally one could somebody could just teach you the lines, and and goodness knows that's happened before. Yeah. But now I've just found I have a photographic memory, so yeah. I need to know where the line is. So I've got to find the machine that uh, teaches me the lines, but also says this is at the top of page seventeen <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Or so that I get you know. So prior to this, learning lines was very very easy for you. Yes, used to be. Yeah. Not so easy now. But you, I'll find a way. Can you remember lines from other I productions do, way I back? I could do the whole of Twelfth Night for you now. Go on. Or the whole <laughs> of Midnight. Oh. Don't encourage her. <laughs> Don't stop. Oh. <laughs> like a runaway but, train. Yeah. You asked you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And, uh, and in the, the, the end of the movie, uh, Alleluia, we hear the hymn, Alleluia, and you're in the choir. Well, choir, I suppose so, yes. You are in it. Group of people singing. Yes. I don't think I go so far as saying choir. But no, but you, you're no stranger to musical theatre. <laughs> you're no, no, but I mean, one of your big hits in the West End was when you were Sally Bowles in Cabaret. Yeah. There you are. That was a while ago. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Was it, it was the West End premiere of that. It was. It yeah. was. It was at the Palace Theatre. Uh, we had a most marvellous time. No, it looks, it looks like you had a fabulous if you, time. It's like you can see I'm having a good time. Well, you're having a better time here. <laughs> <laughs> That's some bottom. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes the trouble that we were at the Palace Theatre and the, and, and the dressing room, my dressing room at the Palace Theatre, it was below ground with a bit of window at the top, you must know it, Greg. Yeah, yeah. With a bit of window at the top, so you hear everybody walking by. And I heard one person walking by very early on, and she, she said, I heard this woman saying, Judy Dench in a musical, no one will go to see that, dear, no one. <laughs> <laughs> As you're making up. <laughs> <laughs> can I tell a little story about Judy? That, oh, please do. Yeah, uh, which you can cut out later, but. <laughs> The first time we met was backstage at a Royal Command performance. I think it was Hey Mr. Producer. It was 1998 or something. I'd just come to London. I was doing Oklahoma and I was going to sing a song from Oklahoma and you were singing Sin in the Clowns. There was a number of different performers and I will never forget this. I was so nervous. I'm in London, the Queen, the whole thing. Everyone's there. And as I came down the stairs, you were performing before me. As I came down the stairs, you were standing the, the stage is right there. You were right next in the wing, and you were like this. You're going, "Why did I say yes? Why did I say yes? Why did I?" And you were muttering and muttering. And I said, <coughs> "Judy, you're like what?" I said, "You're amazing. I saw you at the dress rehearsal. You were the best thing here." And she goes, "Really?" I said, "You're an incredible singer." She goes, "Oh, shut up! I can't sing. What did I say?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. That's a great story. <laughs> But as actors, we need that encouragement, you know what I'm saying? And we support each other, you know? So when we see somebody that's locked in and they're in the zone, sometimes the, the right words could just, like, give them that, that edge they need. And that's, yeah. that's beautiful. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Right. So it's also that thing, look, finding the fire alarm backstage just in case. That works yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing where it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Julie Swim was Alleluia. Uh, meanwhile, Hugh Jackman brings us, oh, such a powerful drama. This is called The Sun. Mm -hmm. It's in cinemas from... Today, and this is a film written and directed by Florian Zeller, mm -hmm. who we know because he wrote The Father. But now, this isn't a sequel. This, but it is a companion piece. Would you describe it as? Yeah, it's spiritually connected. It's thematically connected. He wrote three plays: The Father, The Son, The Mother. Wow. So wow. he turned the first one, The Father, into a film. This is his second one. I'm not sure if he's doing The Mother. But, for example, Anthony Hopkins is in our movie and, of course, won the Oscar for The Father, but it's not the same character. Gotcha. So it's all around families facing a crisis. In the first one, it was a man with dementia, and the film really takes you inside the head of Anthony Hopkins' character yeah. and what it's like to have dementia. That this was an amazing movie. The extraordinary. Father. Yeah. And extraordinary. Yeah. And it was Florian's first direct... It was his directorial debut, and he it was in, um, incredible. And so this follow-up film, The Sun, is about a 17-year-old boy going through acute depression. And instead of being inside the, his head, 
it's really centred around the, the people caring for the son, mm -hmm. the parents. Uh, I play the father who's now remarried and so there's a stepmother and there's a baby. There's, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. And it really... What Florian is able to do is make you feel what it's like to be in the shoes of those characters. Yeah, no, he really does. And, I mean, mm. you're stunning in it, but it's an amazing cast. Vanessa Kirby, our own Vanessa Kirby in it. Yes, yeah, she's uh, Laura Dern. Laura Dern, yeah. Anthony Hopkins. Uh, there's a, a young actor from Australia, actually, uh, auditioned on Zoom. His name is Zen McGrath. He's Australian. He's an Aussie. And, wow. yeah, he just put... Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, so... Um, it, it was an amazing cast, it was an amazing experience, and it's a film that I hope will start some conversations around yeah. mental health. Love it. Listen, I'll tell you what, we've got a clip. Uh, this is you and your son, played by uh, the Australian, uh, Zen McGrath, <laughs> and it's the two of you having a showdown. Take back what you just said, Nicholas. Do you hear me? You take back what you just said, now. Asshole! Me? An asshole? Me? Haven't I always done everything for you? I stayed with your mother for years for your sake. So why are you saying this? Why? Why? Tell me why. Is it because I fell in love with another woman? Is that my crime? How is that any of your business? I have the right to reinvent my life. Fuck, it's my life, you hear me? It is my life! I'm, I'm sorry, Nicholas. I, no, I don't know what just happened. And it, it is very powerful, and clearly, you know, you're playing a character, but at the same time, you know, you're a dad. Right. Playing a, a dad. So right. did, did it inform this dad, or did that dad inform your home life? I didn't go home and do that, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It changed me as a parent. I think the one thing... There's a line, a beautiful line in this play by one of the doctors when uh, the boy ends up going to a psychiatric hospital and we have this agonising decision of whether to leave him in or to take him out. The, the boy is desperate to come out. And the doctor is saying, love isn't enough. It's not always enough. And that's one of the most difficult things, I think, for a parent to hear because you love that kid more than anyone. You are there for that kid. You know that kid more than anyone. But sometimes with really difficult me mental health issues, you need help. You don't know what to do. You need professionals. And I, I think what that's one of the things I've taken away from this. As a parent, it's OK not to know. It's OK to say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, it's OK to be open with your kids, to be vulnerable. Um, I used to think that they probably wanted surety from me, strength. They don't want to see me vulnerable. I now share with them things uh, that I wouldn't have done before. And, and hopefully I'm not you know, a boring dad doing it, but I, I think they appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I think I'm right, in the middle of all of this, then you lost your own dad. Yeah, my father passed away during filming. It was a uh, very... It was a very emotional time, and I... I'm so grateful to... First of all, my family were there. We were in a COVID bubble, so thank goodness I had my family with me. Yeah. The director, Florian, but every single member of that crew and cast, because... Um, when you go through something like that and you're doing a film that is that intense, mm -hmm. you just can't do it alone. You can't. You need to lean on people. Yeah. And uh, I had people there. And, uh, uh, and I did. And so I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brian, you should be so proud of this film because you are so good in it. It's Thanks. such a powerful film. <laughs> It's called The Sun is Out Today. Trying Hugh Jackman, everybody. Very good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to drink. No, 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 yes. <laughs> you break the drink. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. You I didn't know it's just the air in this life. I there know. We go. It's life. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's all there. Uh, Michael B. Jordan brings us a very different movie. Adonis Creed returns in Creed 3. This is out in cinemas on March the 3rd. And uh, here's just a taste of what to expect. Ooh, wow. Damien's fighting the world and he's trying to hurt people. I vouch for you. You think you mad? Try spending half your life in a cell. Why can somebody else live your life? I'm coming for everything. You threatening me? Something is going on with you. Damien was like family. Now we pass talking. Then maybe you just have to find him. I need you to let go of your fear. 
They call it guilt. Let go of whatever was and walk into what is. I feel those chains are breaking, yeah. I fear God, I don't fear death. I see those strings and take a step. It's pretty great. <laughs> so, don't, don't make him mad, Eugene. No. Uh, One difference between us. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. So, Donna Creed, when we last saw Donna Creed on top of the world, yep. uh, why is he back? What drags him back into the ring? It's past. You know, um, how can we somehow make Adonis Creed an underdog again? You know, he has everything he wanted. He checked off all the boxes. He has the family. He has the, you know, he has the cars. He has the fame. He has the, the title. Um, so, you know, one thing I want to explore with this, with this movie is, uh, you know, childhood trauma. You know, and how, and how during those transformative years, um, how does that shape us as men today? You know, and, and just listening to you speak about, you know, you know, parenting and, and, and how to do the right thing. And as a man, you know, what does toxic masculinity look like today? It doesn't make you any less of a man to speak about your feelings or something that happened to you in the past. So we wanted to kind of frame that around Adonis, you know, and, and, and the form of his childhood best friend that, uh, that went through some, you know, childhood trauma, you know, some shared experiences. And uh, one went left and the other one went right. And uh, a lot of space in between. I'm trying to not spoil everything. Yeah, yeah, dope. And, uh, and, and they end up uh, having to meet 20 years later and has to face that best friend that he hasn't seen in over 20 years. And you're not just starring in this. You're directing this one. I am. Which I is, am. I mean, hats off to you. Yeah, because... yeah, thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate oh, that, man. Because, you know, I'm sure directing any movie is difficult, but directing boxing sequences, that must be such a specific challenge. It, it, it was, but... Funny enough, the, uh, directing the boxing was the easiest thing, you know, really? because it's something that I knew very well. It's a formula to it, you know, and yes, I wanted to take some creative swings because it's the, the ninth movie over the sagas. You know, you think about how many fights that we shot and how many, you know, boxing scenes and, you know, and punches. I had to lean on my, uh, my love of uh, Japanese animation and the themes of that to kind of make this one creatively and visually look different. Um, but, but I, you know... It's funny because if you're, you're, when you're directing yourself, you can somehow, in your performance, direct. So if I need you to look up stage and I know what the shot is, all I have to do is move up stage. I don't have to yell cut. I don't have to break the momentum. I can keep the flow, like that, that, that uh, stage kind of presence that, that you, know, you have when you're doing theater. So I found if I did longer takes and I stayed in it longer and I could kind of adjust, I would be able to keep the tension without having to cut, run back to the monitors, you know what I'm saying, look for certain wow. things. So yeah, it, it was kind of like a, a cheat code of sorts to but be able so to... that's so much to have going on in your head. We're a little nuts, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we're all a little off of here. <laughs> but, but it was the challenge, you know, honestly, from, you know, acting for such a long time, I wanted to see how I could evolve. You know, I've seen it done before. You know, obviously been on set for a really long time. And I just want to challenge myself to see how I can grow. And now part of being in a movie like this is you need to be in great shape. Uh, clearly, you are in great shape. This is you in... This, is it this month's Rolling Stone? I think this is you in this month's Rolling Stone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was... Uh... That was after we finished shooting. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, so this yeah. is like the before picture. This is like, yeah. <laughs> this is like, no, that's the what's you... left picture. <laughs> you did just ask if we could swap seats. <laughs> oh, my God. Keep on drinking. Keep on drinking. Keep on alone. But here's the thing. So in this movie, because I think uh, often, you know, people have to get in shape for movies, but in this you have an opponent yes. played by uh, the mighty Jonathan Majors. How great is he? He's incredible. Uh, so when you got into the ring with him, presumably there's a bit of a, oh, he's got an eight-pack for <laughs> yeah. Look at his shoulders. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy because, when, you know, when we first started, you know, training for this was over, you know, about a year and a half ago, going on two years now, and uh, he was in great shape then. I was like, man, we could shoot the movie right now. He's so competitive and such of a, work, a workhorse. We, he would be in the gym before me and he would leave after me. He was like one of the guys that he really like just lived into the gym and uh, it, it shows on screen. It he, really does. It really mm. does. Uh, and talking of getting in shape, uh, Hugh Jackman, you're, you're back being Wolverine. Yep. So presumably that means... <laughs> oh, come on. Sorry to get you off. That, that is the <laughs> blueprint for actors. Like when we saw this, every actor <laughs> wanted to mimic what he did. And listening to his diet and his workout regimen, that this oh. is the blue. The, this, this, this is, is CGI. This, this no, 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 no
that's donuts and sugar right before you shoot. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Dehydrating yourself. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's where I got it from. Really? Yes. Ooh, wow. wow. Yeah. But I wasn't directing at the same time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the, I mean, so obviously there's a lot of gym work, but the, yep. but the diet is even the worse in a way. That's the thing I didn't realize. Uh, bodybuilders will always say that their body is 70% their diet and only 30% their training. Because I assumed it was all about pump and iron, but yep. it's a science. The whole eating thing is a science, and I complain about it all day long. I'm in this thing right now where I'm eating 5,000 calories a day. I'm just loading, eating, eating, and I'm complaining. And my wife's like, shut up. If you complain <laughs> about eating, I'm going to kill you. Um, but, yeah. Sitting beside these two guys, I feel like they're a tuxedo and I'm a pair of brown shoes. <laughs> Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Famous George Gobel line, but yeah. I told, I, can I tell you, I told my daughter that I was on the show with you, and she said, oh, "Will you get him to say my two left feet line?" Just when you said shoes, and I just thought it's one of the greatest lines <laughs> in movies. From do you remember it? Best in show. Best in show. Oh. Uh, I can't dance. I've oh. got two left feet. <laughs> <laughs> Great dad. Yeah. Great dad. Good, good dad. dad. Good dad. See you later. Um, no uh, talking of iconic characters, uh, Eugene, Eugene <laughs> Levy. Now, you have created some extraordinary uh, comedy characters over the years. A lot of people know you as uh, Jim's dad in American Pie. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> but you didn't want to do that. You said no to that. Oh, I said no initially, yeah, because, um, uh, you know, I read this, uh, I I got the script, and uh, reading the script, you get to, you know, page four, and, you know, somebody is uh, masturbating (laughs) into a glass of beer, (laughs) and then somebody else unknowingly picks up the beer and then, you know, kind of drinks it, and then there's, uh, and then two pages later, there's, somebody kind of, uh, you know, uh, performing oral sex on a... Can I just say, I can only apologize. <laughs> I no idea this is where he's going I'm, to go. Uh... I, I'm building up to a point here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to do it. I didn't even like the part the way it was written, Jim's dad, because it was kind of written as a uh, nudge, nudge, wink, wink kind of thing with the, with the dad trying to be friends, kind of a hip friend with his son. And I said, uh, I, I don't want to play that. I think a dad should be the kind of dad that nobody wants to hang around with, right? <laughs> when, when they're a kid, just a square dad trying to do the right thing. And uh, so we, they allowed me to improvise, do all the scenes, take them out and improvise before we started shooting, uh, before I committed to do it. And then I liked the way the improvisations were going. It was kind of turning out the way I wanted it to, so I, I said, okay. But that was it. Yeah, that was a... Wow. That, and, that was a tough one. And it's, I mean, I think, what, it must be nearly 50 years now of creating amazing uh, comedy characters. And finally, uh, you are playing yourself. You're, you're being yourself. Uh, Eugene Levy in the TV series The Reluctant Traveller. This is streaming on Apple TV Plus from the 24th <laughs> of February, which is next Friday. So, uh, Reluctant Traveller, where did The Reluctant Traveller go? Where did they take you? Where did they take me? Took me all over the world. Like, uh, it, this was a show that, that they, 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 they... I got a call saying, you know, the Apple TV Plus wants you to host a travel show about exotic hotels around the world. And, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the first second, I'm going, wow. <laughs> I get this call? <laughs> um, and, you know, they didn't know anything. What they didn't know was I'm not fond of traveling. I, I, I really don't love it, you know? I don't hate it. I just don't love it. It's like a pain, you know? It's getting, just getting, getting through security at an airport and taking off your thing and your shoes and your belt and your thing and getting berated by security people, you know, who are never in a good mood. And (laughs) no wonder, I mean, how many times a day can you say, take your shoes off? Take your shoes off. <laughs> so by the time you get through that experience, I'm ready to go home. I, um, yeah, we went all over. We did go all over the world. and Amazing place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The point of the show for me is trying things. It's just getting to the point where you try things. Go to the places you wouldn't necessarily have gone to. 
<laughs> I wouldn't have booked Lapland to go on a vacation near the Arctic Circle because I don't. Ha I'm not. I don't have a very adventurous spirit. I'm not a curious person, which is one of the reasons I said no in the beginning. <laughs> You've got the wrong person. I'm not an explorer. <laughs> well, we've got, we've got a clip of you. Uh, this is you in Finland, and you are trying out something. You're trying out some ice fishing. Oh, God. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. This must be Little Elo. Taisto. Taisto. So he's very anxious to start some fishing. Well, I've never fished. Never. Never fished, no. We're gonna test the really old-fashioned rod fishing and hope to get some perch. We have to make a hole. You wanna try? Yeah, how's that? No, no, sounds good. Are you having a good time? It's, it's, you're doing well. Uh-huh. Don't worry. I wasn't expecting to manually drill through the ice. <laughs> so it takes, you know, it takes a lot if you're not used to it. You need some help? No, I got it. For uh, anybody with lesser capabilities, it might have been a chore, but, um, you know, it was kind of one, two, three for me. Oh, wow. Ready. And then up. Good luck. Over. See? Tougher than I look. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, well, Eugene Show is The Reluctant Traveller. It's on Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, but now, I hear it's time to meet our next guest, Hotfoot, from the UK premiere of the latest Ant-Man blockbuster. Please welcome Paul Rudd and Michael Douglas! <laughs> So, welcome, gentlemen. How is the premiere? Oh, well, it's it's kind of happening right now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. snuck out after it just started and everything. Oh, wow. It was crazy. They have a big press line and there are people dressed up in costumes. It's like a Comic-Con, really. Oh, yeah. um, but it was very exciting. Yeah. Are there people dressed up as your character, Michael? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> So the film, Ant-Man and the Wasp, a quantum mania. It's in cinemas from today. Mm. Uh, let's take a look. Let me make this easy for you. You will bring me what I need. Or everything you call a life will end. This is all my fault. You may not want her to watch this. We had a deal. Thought you could win. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. Oh! Oh <laughs> yeah! It is epic. That's, so that's the four titles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so Paul Rudd, uh, the start of this film, we find out, man, Scott, he's in a he's in a good place. Yeah, he's in a good place. It's kind of uh, after the events of Endgame and all of the other Marvel, you know, stories that we've seen before. So he's he's been to jail a few times. He's been to the quantum realm a few times. He's uh, saved the universe. Great shape. He's a, yeah, you know, yeah. he's he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's like, written okay, a book. He's written, he's written a book. A book. Uh, he's like, okay, finally, I can just rest. And, uh, he, you know, he's uh, kind of taking a little bit of a victory lap, but he gets some time now to spend with his daughter, which is what he wants. Okay. And, uh, and things are good for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your character, Hank, is he sort of semi-retired? Henry to you. Henry, Henry sorry. Henry. <laughs> <laughs> Hank is semi-retired. If, if in, this, in the second one, which is the Ant-Man and the Wasp, my wife, Michelle Pfeiffer, named Janet, has been lost in the quantum realm for 30 years. Mm. No. 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> and we, and we, we, a long time. And you're long you're time. selling this film one ticket at a time. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we have a new member of our family, our granddaughter, Cassie, Catherine, who makes a little faux pas 
A little faux pas brings the whole family back to the quantum realm, which is what we try to get out of. <laughs> you following this? <laughs> 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 there, there'll be a quiz afterwards, Judy. Separate these guys. What is the quantum realm? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I just found out about a week ago. Yeah. Tell me, yeah. tell me. The picture's over. Yeah, yeah it's now yeah. okay. So, all right, the quantum realm is a really small place. <laughs> well, it's really tiny. Yeah, it's really tiny. You go down. I mean, you know, if you look at your pinky finger. <laughs> And you took the tip of it na needle and just touched it. That's the size of the quantum. <laughs> so basically, it's massive when you get down there. Michael B. Jordan's following. I am. <laughs> <laughs> the movie takes place under Michael's fingernail. <laughs> no, no. Let, let's just let's get into this. Let's get into this because the the new baddie in this movie is played by Jonathan Majors, who also is opposite you in Creed Three. Wow. I mean, he's having an amazing time amazing. right now. I know. He couldn't be more Talk different in these films. It's extraordinary. <laughs> right. Well, he, we were actually he was getting ready to go film Creed I think right while we were fighting so oh, I'm sorry uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry yeah. Yeah. He, was, he, was, he was in it he was oh, locked he in was, he was in it he was I felt bad for you but even though I know you can handle yourself I can't handle myself <laughs> <laughs> it was terrifying because they're long fight scenes really yeah. long fight scenes and you know he is, an, he is a good actor he's in it and uh, the choreography was really you know we mapped everything out but Occasionally, you might miss a step, or you know, and so it was. Yeah, it was. It was pretty intense. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, did you actually get hurt? Hurt? You well, cracked a rib, didn't you? Crack a rib? I did. I cracked a rib. Not on jo not on Jonathan. Um, on like a part of the set. <laughs> 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 and it went to the side. Okay. It's like, oh, that, oh. ooh, yeah, that, ooh. <laughs> it was padded. Um, actually, uh, someone else had action scenes with someone in this movie uh, because you, Jackman, uh, you've worked with the Wasp, Evangeline, Evangeline Lilly. Lilly. Yes, Evangeline Lilly on uh, Real Steel in wow, 2010. That's right. That's right. And I never forget, actually, we had a, a kiss in the movie, and it was the first time at the premiere, as the scene was playing, I realized it was my son was there, who was 10, and I was like, oh. He's never seen me kiss anyone other than his mum. <laughs> and I looked, as, this, as we're going for the kiss, I looked at him, he was like... <laughs> and I looked over and he looked at me and he goes, you're in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's another uh, nice connection on the couch, because, uh, Michael, you worked with Eugene, but a long time ago. In the 70s. 1979. Yep. Yeah, and he was good in um, in Montreal, Canada. Uh, and... Yeah, Montreal, Canada, and and uh, and New York. Yeah, I believe in New York. And this that was, was your first movie. That was my first film. Yeah, yeah. we were right there. And I know, and that was it was an amazing. You were in Second City, weren't you? Before that? Oh, before that, yeah, I was in Second City in 1979. I wasn't doing much, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I, was, I was also very early in my uh, in my career. Uh, I had finished. I did a Streets of San Francisco a, a series. Yeah. A few years. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we, yeah. Come on. Thank you, thank you. I, come on. <laughs> but yeah, we we uh, we did this movie. I got the uh, I got the I got the part. Um, this I'm is not sure running. why I got it because you know when I auditioned for it, I was getting laughs. Right. In the audition, and I thought, well, there you go. This is not, maybe this is who not knew, who knew? I thought it was you. a drama. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a drama. So, and then they came and they said, no, 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 it's okay. Yeah. So I did, I did get, get the part, but it was kind of nerve wracking for and me. Look at us, huh? Yeah. I mean, what a lineup you got here, by it the way. It is crazy. I mean, it's, 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 <laughs> You, 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 don't find, you don't find this mistakes, you know. <laughs> and now, uh, Judy, you haven't worked with Michael, but you had a lovely honour from his father, uh, I, Kirk Douglas. I did indeed. Mm. Yes. I got invited to meet him. Yeah, you, because you... Never the Santa to be Is it the Santa Barbara International it Film was, Festival? It was. Yeah. And, and he wasn't a... well at the yeah. time, but I did go and, and was invited to go and meet him, and I'll never forget it, ever. No. I think we've got a picture of the two of you together. Oh. Uh, there you are together. Oh, yes. Oh, I really like nice. that picture. We'll get you one. <laughs> uh, 2017. <laughs> and, and we also share the birthday. Are you September 25th, too? De December the 9th. <laughs> 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 oh. 
<laughs> one of you's right. <laughs> 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 and I got so dad, Dad's birthday. Oh. Dad's birthday, December 9th. This is Chris. We shared it. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Must be me. <laughs> and earlier we were talking about uh, getting in shape in films. So when you're Ant-Man, mm. is there a big pressure to kind of really bulk up for Ant-Man or...? Well, uh, I try and, and get in shape and there's a whole kind of regimen that uh, I go through. I have in each one. Um, I was doing it with this one too and working out simultaneously with Jonathan. Wow. <laughs> Which, yeah, seemed kind of yeah. is pointless. <laughs> but, but, also, but also, I'm thinking, like, Wolverine and Creed, they take their shirts off. Ant-Man never takes his shirt off. Yeah, I stupidly realized that about halfway through filming. I'm like, why, am I, why am I putting myself through this? <laughs> this, this suit can do most of the work. <laughs> but I did, and um, I like to think, oh, you know what, it, it gave me enough... Uh, my conditioning was good, and I was able to film throughout the day. And we know he has great abs. Yeah. Even yeah. Though... <laughs> <laughs> Do we know? <laughs> Michael talks of little else. <laughs> uh, listen, we're out of time, and it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much, and good luck with the film. Paul Rudd and Michael Douglas! <laughs> Right, uh, this is special time for music. With 60 million album sales worldwide, this pop superstar is the UK's most played female artist of the century. Here with a really amazing performance of the title track from her ninth studio album, Trust Fall, it is Pink! <laughs>
Nice job. How incredible was that? And give it up for Pink and the performance artist, Johan Bourgeois, who is on the stage there. Hi. That is one for the ages. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Pink, this is Eugene. So much room over we now. Have plenty I'm room <laughs> for you. Okay. Uh, he put his hand down when I said that. <laughs> that old yeah, trick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pink, that was amazing. We've got to talk about uh, Thank Yo you. Yo Yo Johan. Yes, he's incredible. Johan Bourgeois. Uh, <laughs> How did you find him? On the gram. On the gram. Oh, yeah. in fact, I th yeah. yes, I, th I think I've seen a, uh, an Instagram video of you. I've been watching him perform for years, and I finally thank you for letting me do that. It's the m least work I've ever done in a performance, so <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I mean, just incredible. Yeah, just incredible. We should say uh, that track is the title track of the album, which is out today. It is. Congratulations. Wow. When we heard, when I heard that, oh, we're, you know, sourcing a trampoline for Pink, I assumed you'd be trampling. I know, I feel like I kind of let you down. But <laughs> like, that wouldn't have happened. There would have been <laughs> crash cart and medics. But you are, you've become famous now for doing these aerial stuff. I am Pinkerbell. Yeah, you really are. <laughs> yeah. No, because you, you've watched the, the aerial stunts oh, that Pink yeah, does. Oh, yeah, 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 it's incredible. Yeah. Like, it's just... It's, it's a lot of fun. It's very scary. It's fun. Scary. I was afraid of heights, so I decided I had to do it. But, wh I mean, that begs the question, why? Uh, <laughs> because lots of people go on tour, and they stay on the stage and sing the songs. My but, mom asks I mean, me why I won't do that. I mean, look at... But that why too... would you when you can do that? That's you. That's incredible. But also, I love the ones where you're. Uh, let's see if we've got one here. Of Have you just you going. Seen the th men these ones. I love these ones. That yeah, must be. Yeah, that's really fun. Oh yeah. God. I can't describe it. And are you singing live when you're up in those? Always. Things? I will never. I've never lip synced in my life. But that must be so. I mean, that's so hard. I, I, I don't know if it's hard because I'm a screamer. I don't. I don't sing ballads. I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> is it a different feeling from the from the from the fans that you get the energy, you know, oh, versus yeah, being on I get stage? I can see everybody. I can see ev I can see the one kid that had to drive his sister. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty thousand people. I'm like, uh huh. You're the one. <laughs> Don't smile. <laughs> I'm gonna win you over. <laughs> well, that, that kid can go and see you in tour because you're bringing a uh, summer carnival to the oh, UK. Yes. Uh, tickets are available now. It kicks off in Bolton on the 7th of June, and this is all big arenas, right? Uh, stadium. Stadium. Wow. wow. And two dates in Hyde Park. That'll be amazing. Oh. Hyde Park is magic. I did it once before, and it's it's magic. I heard last year's was the hottest day on record, so I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> the chances of that happening again are quite. <laughs> 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 Uh, Pink, I can't thank you enough Thanks for that for performance. Me back. It was just epic. Thanks. Really, really. <laughs> <laughs> good luck with the album and the tour. Pink, everybody! <laughs> and that is it for tonight. No time for red chairs, I'm afraid. So please say a huge thank you to my other guest tonight, Eugene Levy! <laughs> Singer Freya Ridings, The Mandalorians, Pedro Pascal, Oscar winner Ariana DeBose, and acting great Sir Patrick Stewart and Dame Helen Mirren. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Dame Judi Dench has a heart to heart with Louis Theroux, press red for his interviews on BBC iPlayer. Lifestyle dilemmas and a young pretender. Channing Tatum is male stripper Magic Mike next on BBC One.